joining us on Around the Peninsula, I'm Maria Soraya. We are joined today by two local authors who are going to tell us about their books, Sherry Newell and Lori Jones. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks so, for having us. Yeah. Thank you. You know, interesting topic because I think everybody has a story and it, it's getting it from your head to the paper to a book form, which you have both done. You're both self-published and I really wanted to focus on that because I think it's interesting. There's so many different ways to go now and I have a friend who published a book a few years ago and he did it all online, on the computer, he self-published and you know, years ago you couldn't do that. Yeah. So now we have so much more information. So let's first talk about your books, how you decided to write about what you did. Um, Laura, you start. Okay, well, I guess what, what really prompted me is that I had lived six years in Europe as a model. Okay. And even though I had a, I had a fabulous time, I will have to say, but I think because I was an older model at okay. 21, oh, I saw older the, at 21. Older at 21. <laughs> I saw these young girls coming in who were 17 and 18, and that was different because this was the 80s. Right. So it was before cell phones. It was before the Internet. They yeah. were more naive. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like sending 14-year-olds wow. thousands of miles away into a city which was party and opportunities and meeting crazy people and they didn't always handle themselves very well because they didn't have someone there to really watch over them. Right. And so I saw a lot of things go on with these young women and it just made me so angry and I'd be like trying to talk to them it's like you know I just be very they'd be a little bit more taken in situations that they shouldn't have been. Now, did you take notes at that time, or was this just something I that wrote you about started? everything. You I mean, did. I okay. just, you know, you chronicle, if you're a writer, you just chronicle everything. So it was funny things I'd see, funny situations that happened, everything. I have stacks and stacks of, of notes. So did you know you were a writer while you were a model? Was that something that was always sort of in well, you, or...? I think writers sometimes they say are born that way okay. because I wrote my first book when I was in elementary school in wow. pencil and illustrated it. <laughs> then I guess you did. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, pretty much, I, I have to write and I'll okay. write anywhere. So you'll see me somewhere in a restaurant, I'll go, oh, I just got an idea. And I'll use napkins and any kind of little piece of paper. So yeah, you just, you, I write because I have to write. Okay, now Sherry, yeah. how about for you? Well, for me, it took me forever to have my kids. It felt like uh, I was going to have to get a monkey and dress it and call it mine. <laughs> but uh, So I tried forever, and then when I finally had my kids, it took me 10 years, I just felt like, for some reason, my kids, and I think everyone feels that way about their kids, they were just angels. I felt like they were sent Aww. to me, especially, and I had always loved photography, so I began just photographing every moment, and I would, I would just felt like every picture was for a reason, and it ended up culminating in this book and this book has so many layers there's just so many things and then I had lived in New York for a while one of my best friends that I met there we became best friends and we said one day we're gonna have babies together so they'll know what best friends are Aww. and it took me forever to get pregnant she kept saying I won't have a baby until you have a baby and it was like this little promise she made to me and I got married first and then I remember calling her on the phone crying going I don't think I can get pregnant they said I'm gonna have a hard time and she said I won't get pregnant till you get pregnant. Just don't worry about it, you know. And I, so I said, but I'm going to have to hurry because she was engaged. And so it just kept taking forever. And so when she got married, I said, I release you from this promise. You go ahead. She goes, nope, you're going to have a baby. You're going first. So I finally, like at year nine, I finally got pregnant. And then the minute I got pregnant, she got pregnant right away. Oh, wow. And I had my babies and her baby was born nine months to the day later. Actually, yeah, right in nine months. And we just were always close. And then she, after her daughter turned three, called me one day, same thing. And she was on the phone. She said, they found a lump in my breast. Oh. And I said, what can I do? And she said, just be my friend. And we went through 10 years. She had stage four breast cancer for 10 years. And the doctor said she was probably one of the longest living survivors of stage four because it had gone all over her body. And we oh, did all boy. kinds of things. I remember just doing wacky things, like I would research things. And I took her to a healer in New York City once. And she at the time was very sick, could barely walk. We went in there, and I remember this healer working with her. And then he just told her, he said, you will stay here as long as you have a reason. The doctors will tell you you're sick, and I'm not saying you're not, but we all come here for a reason, and you find that reason, and you'll be here until you are ready to go. And her reason was her daughter. She pulled herself up by her bootstraps every day, days she did not feel good, days that she could barely get out of bed, and she functioned solely for her daughter, Mercedes. 
And so my purpose when I finally, these little photographs came together and I had pictures of her and she became an award-winning photographer and I, I did greeting cards for a while for recycled paper greetings and I just kind of put this book together just to honor her. It was like I had to some way let her know that I love her. Now, was it difficult, so. obviously it must have been difficult for you to write the story. I mean, when you were going through it, was it, was it more like therapy or was it hard or a combination well, of both? Well, it's funny because the, the book came together after. It was like mm -hmm. later. I wanted to right. think of a way to honor her. So I just kind of went through my photographs and thought of the story, and it, it became also, because my, it, this whole book is my journey, how it took me forever to have kids, so I feel like, right. I really do feel like children are angels. I feel like angels are messengers, and I feel like we're blessed to have these children, and they become messengers. They teach us on our journey. Right. And I feel like in so many ways, you know, that's what I want the message to be, is that we should realize how special they are, and the lessons that come to us make us better people. So I just wanted Kim to know that I love her and that I honored her. And her daughter has become so special to us. She comes out every year. We fly her out. What and a great story. She spends time. And uh, even though she, her daughter's on the East Coast, my daughter's on the West. Do you know how kids are? They text now and of they course. write. And <laughs> At least write letters. So, now yeah. everybody texts. So yeah. they text. So it's just amazing because, uh, you know, that's Kim's legacy, Desi, and she has become so special. She's like my other child. Now, you know? let me ask you, how long did it take for both of you to write your books? How long of a process was it from the time that you started until there, you, there it is right now, book? Well, for me, <laughs> <laughs> like when, I, when I came back from here, I was really angry. And I wanted people to know that, you know, you think the modeling world is all glamour and of glitz, course. but you know, there is another side. There's of a darker course. side, and I just felt like that had to be out there to let people know, let young women know, take the adventure, have a great time, but be careful. Right. I mean, be careful. And so I wrote this right when I came back mm -hmm. in the late okay. 80s. And, you know, my journey is that I got really close to a meeting at a major publisher, and then they said no. And then I put it aside and then it got really close a few years later to getting to a movie studio and making and then they said no <laughs> and I was like wow people are interested in the story but it's just not making that final leap and right. so when I met Sherry who introduced me to the to the book group okay. I uh, sat down because the, the the group itself is just great for feedback from different opinions you know different lifestyles and that solidified it because I also realized I had to have a strong parent presence in there as well. Well, interesting. You both belong to the group yes. here in, in Palos Verdes, yes. the writing group that meets at the library. Um, did they help you to restructure your book in a, in a different way, do you think? Or what was, the, what was the difference? What I love about this group is that there are no holds barred. Yes. I mean, when you okay. read, they pick you apart, and that's what you want. Yes. You want it right, to absolutely. be the best that it can mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I remember when I had sent out my book to an agent, and he actually, I actually did not self-publish. My book is through a little publishing house okay. in uh, Del Mar, California. But um, this first agent that I sent to said no, but he was so sweet. He took the time to say, I think you need to work on your, your uh, rhythm okay. and your pacing and you know young children like repetition so I just took it to heart and I had already written it and I'd played with it for two years took another year just took it apart and redid it since I did the illustrations as well I just kept taking it back to the group and I would come in and go rewrite <laughs> and they would go you know okay because whatever you read is what you read but we're so good that way I mean yeah, we just you yeah. know keep doing our work till it gets right till mm -hmm. we feel like it's ready to be published. Now do you both yeah. have agents? No, uh, no with I angels? do not. Okay, no. angels. Okay. And then as far as the publishing goes, yeah, as you just spoke about, you go to publishers, they can either accept your book, reject your book. How did you self-publish? What was your process? Okay, well, the self, you know, actually it's very easy today. All the technologies and tools make it very easy today. The main thing I have to say, though, again, just quickly getting back to that book group, is make sure you have a great product. Right, <laughs> absolutely. Right, you know, for sure. And right. once that goes out, what I did is... Um, well, I went to Create Space. I went to Create Space. Amazon makes it so easy, you upload it. Okay. And there it is, and it's out there. And the good thing about self publishing, in a way, is that then you can send it out to reviewers and you send them the book or you send them the Kindle. And so it kind of just bumps you up. You're already right there. And a lot of people as well, you know, get yourself a website so you right. have you can direct traffic to it. So, but the publishing in itself nowadays, the process is very easy. Now, did you both have editors, somebody to edit the, the book before it became published? 
Well, I don't know that you did. I did. I, I had my first version out there. And I think that to me is the most difficult yes, part. Yes. Here's your baby that you've given birth yes. to here and you're ready to go. And all of a sudden people look at it and go, well, you, you need this to be different and that to be different. So somebody really does have to look at it and say, right. okay, let's fix some stuff here. Well, this is right. the interesting about the editing because the group did the developmental ed editing in a okay. way because they said, oh, you know, cut her out, which is hard when you have to cut That's people. You're like, I love that person. Yeah. So cut her out. or do So they kind of help you with that development mental edi right. editing and then an editor gets those well you don't have a dash here you don't have a comma there exactly. and oh you know this word is not spelled correctly so I did have an editor but it was more for the the grammar right now how yeah. about for you Sherry? well my publisher was more or less my editor, editor. I mean right. I worked and worked in the and uh, the group but it's funny that you say that I had a different illustration on the cover and then we settled you on the one that it. I have now we changed it because it became more of a baby gift book okay I had it toddlers and it is a toddler book but the cover just had that feeling of a baby gift book which she liked so now we, there's, we there, changed that. speaking of children's books real quick there's so many children's books how did you sort of decide on the one that you did because it, it just seems like that that's a huge genre out there. I know. I have so many projects in the work, but for me, because I had this picture of my friend kissing her daughter, I had to somehow have this project first. It was just important to me to start with honoring Kim so the rest of my work as I go forward will have started with her. Right. So interesting now once you got to your distribution what happened there how does that work because obviously if you have somebody helping you out or how did you distribute distribution is the big question yeah, I would think so. <laughs> and my journey that's right where I'm up to right now is up okay. to the distribution what I found recently which has been helpful is to reach out to your local community mm -hmm, right and the local community has been really great about that you go to local cafes where people mm -hmm. can relax have a cup of coffee there's your book uh, local local bookstores of course okay. uh, so, and then local you know like libraries and such see right. get just get the word out there and you know start with your community and then it kind of branches from there overall distribution chapter two <laughs> well, you know, it's difficult because we have so few bookstores left you know yes. i mean they've closed so many bookstores yes. now that it's on the computer you know you're ordering it through you know online and different addresses and so forth and so on so i would think that that's probably a huge challenge for a writer well Lori and i were just discussing this whether you go through a publishing house or you're self-published it mm -hmm. really is becoming more the author's yes. job to market their own books I'm so sure. it is up to you to really find ways to get it out there because you know, they can only yeah. do so much so yeah. you know we our group we're we're trying to actually form as part of our group a little marketing mm -hmm. oh, segment too because we feel like we can all help each other and network in that way so that and the will truth be is good. you know Amazon is available to everyone it really yeah. is yeah and mm -hmm. so that makes it easy but again it gets down to also social media exactly that's the next yeah. thing to get the word out and yeah, and then hopefully it just it spreads. So it's like I, a I, grassroots project. Yes, yeah, like you for hope sure. Just, for you know, sure. Tell one friend and they tell two. Yes. Yeah. 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 I have so. to ask both of you, what was it like the first time you picked up your book and it was a real book and you held it in your hands? What What is that moment like? You want to go? Well, actually, what's more, what for me was more exciting is that when I went to a local bookstore and I to see if they would carry my book, it was laying on the counter and I was waiting oh. for the owner to show up. Uh -huh. And this woman came in, and she walked all around the store, and she was looking at all these books, and she came to the counter, and she put my oh, book up, okay. and she looked at the back, and she looked inside. That, to me, was so thrilling, because I thought, you're going to really like it, <laughs> <laughs> because I write to entertain and send a message, and so she's like, is this book for sale? That was actually a very exciting moment for That's me, amazing. to know that you've touched people, uh -huh. and you've made them interested in something. So more than, more than me seeing it with someone else going, oh, Hey, is this for sale? <laughs> I think it's interesting because a book is not tangible and while well, you're writing it, but when you see it, it's one of those things, well, wow, this actually happened. You yeah. Know? Well, for me, my publisher was supposed to send me books and they kept not coming and not coming. <laughs> and so then I, I play tennis and I was at the tennis courts one morning and one of my girlfriends had already ordered it on Amazon. And she came oh. up with a book and she goes, Will you sign this for me? Oh. And I went, I haven't even seen it yet. Let me see it. And I was looking wow. through it, you know, so it was really, yeah. wow, I haven't even got my book yet. How did you get it so quick? She goes, I just ordered, ordered it. it on Amazon. Wow, so amazing. that was so great, yeah. So that tell us nice. what you're working on next. Next projects? Well, mine is the sequel. Because okay. the funny thing that everyone said to me is, well, what happened to the girls? Ah, and it's so funny because 
you know, they're, they're characters, right? <laughs> sort of. <laughs> sort of, yeah. sort of. You know, they're loosely based on, you know, on what I saw. But so that was it. It's like, what, what happened to the girls? And so, of course, this is the fun part. This is the adventure in life. But 15 years later, you're married, you have kids, there's your, you know, situations happening in your community. What happens then when life isn't, you know, when it's just not you and your, you know, in your suitcase? And I have and so, heard some chapters in class and they're great. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> so that was, that, that was, you know, the sequel. The Sounds like re more reality TV coming true yeah. in, in the book, right? <laughs> yeah. And how about for you, Sherry? I have so many projects. I have some individual books like this, and then I have a series that I'm working on. I'm really excited about my sister as a teacher. I have a teaching degree, but I ended up never teaching. But we're working on some uh, books that we, it's kind of our growing up years. I was raised in the South, and in our day growing up, we had a little more leeway than you do now, but uh, it's called the Stinker Series. So we have all these little stories about our growing up, and we did some stinky things growing up. And so then there's another series that I'm working on called The Adventures of Swamp Dog Sam. Aww. And it's about a little puppy that gets Cute. lost in the swamp, and he has all these little adorable characters that save him and are after him. And it's really sweet. So Very I nice. Think well, we'll look for both of your books for sure. Thank, thank you, you so much for being with us today and thank talking about the process and your journey. <laughs> yeah, very good. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Maria Sorreo, and we'll see you next time around the peninsula.